So Heidi's down at the gate. She's picking up some fast food. And uh, not fast food, but like Papa John's or something. Uber's drive, dropping it off here. And in the meantime, she said that uh, there are a lot of check-ins. She said there was like 10 RVs, 10, 11 RVs that are trying to check in. And uh, she said it was a matter of just a short amount of time and all the check-ins were done. She goes, holy cow, they all went through. Sorry about the screen you're seeing here, guys. But the thing is, is the, the guy that's across from us, he has a motorhome. And obviously, he has no toad to go behind his motorhome. You can see off in the distance. I don't know if you guys see that way off in the distance. There's all kinds of people just running around searching for spots now. Uh, <laughs> I think this is a dumb process, I'll tell you the truth. But this guy over here, he left. You know, he left because he, he don't have a towed vehicle. And here's the problem. Everybody thinks this lot is empty when they're seeing it from a distance. So the motorhomes are flying by here and they once they get to this point they realize oh wait a minute that's not an empty spot there's somebody actually there so i still think it's a dumb process i i think there's a better way of doing it but uh this is I mean, what are you gonna do i mean what are you gonna do I, I i think it's kind of funny it just seems odd that they're just gonna cut you loose and say okay there you guys go go find a spot <laughs> Glad we waited for all you guys to get here at noon. Um, I mean, honestly, uh, again, they have plenty of roadway that they could wait and stage people and then bring them in one by one. But that's the way they want to do it. That's the way they do it. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. So it's a beautiful day out, considering it's December. <laughs> um, but this is the day after Christmas, and we're only at a 52 degree high today. But I'm telling you, the sun down here is just, it bakes you. Um, I'm up on the roof. Why? Because we had a leak. Now this was a recall that Forest River has. And basically, they know that they tighten the screw too tight on some of these covers and it cracks and leaks inside. Well, we had all that storm the other day and all that rain, and guess what happened? It cracked and it leaked inside. So all I'm gonna do is just put a piece of a turnabond tape on here, and that'll take care of it until we can get into a dealer and have them finish the recall. Um, or it could be something that I could fix, actually. It's, these, these roof vents or skylights are kind of cheap. If you see something like that on yours, that's a blow mold injection. That's a, a poor way to make these things. They need to be a polycarbonate, like a vacuum mold. But anyways, we'll go ahead and get this cleaned up and uh, we'll uh, put the Eternabon on and we'll be all set. Heidi's down here doing the leg work. Okay, Heidi fixed it. She ran up here and fixed it and then hey, ran back down there. Stop. She did. She got rid of all the stuff, so this will work. Um, it's adhered. It'll keep it from leaking in. That's all that matters until we decide we want it fixed the right way, which I can buy this piece for about $78 on Amazon and then another tube. But this looks like more than one tube, to tell you the truth, that's here. But anyways, this will work for now. Good day, YouTube. So you just got the update. Heidi's back. And what's she do when she comes back? Well, we hang out for a day and not do much because it was cold. Two days. Two days. Yeah, so you guys didn't see videos for two days. And then, what do we do? Laundry. We do laundry. <laughs> um, nice laundry mat. You can see it in the background. Yo Wash. It's only been open for how long now? I didn't. You asked. I didn't hear what she said. Three weeks. It's been open three weeks. Yeah, I was gonna say it wasn't. Hasn't and been very I'm long. telling you, this is the nicest laundromat that you'll possibly go to, other than if they were serving food inside or something. Uh, they have a wash and fold service. There's like three attendants. They have 80 pound machines, or they yeah, were heavy. The 80 pound washers. Um, they have ozone free. It's free for them to do ozone. Disin sanit so what is it? disinfecting, sanitizing. Yeah. On cold. On cold. You got to do cold. They have huge dryers, and right now it's not very packed. And you know why it's not very packed? 
That's hardy white's not very packed. I don't know why it's not very packed. Because it's expensive as hell. Yeah, it is expensive. But, um, but I, it's clean. Like, um, at Three Flags, if you drop something on the floor, yeah, <laughs> you had lint all over it. Yeah, this, now I'm talking no, this about place the is, campground. This place is spotless. This place is spotless because it's that's only three weeks old. Attendant on duty. Three attendants. And they're open 24 hours a day. Not at, here. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, uh, I looked at so there's many. There's three other locations. Some of them are open 24 hours. This one's from 6.30 to 10.30. Yeah, 9.15 is your last load. Yeah, and I'm, t I'm telling you again, this is the place to go. So let's go ahead and do a flip around here and show you why else we came here. Because <laughs> that trash right there. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. The uh, Aldi's is right here. And Heidi's already been in to get some soap. And what did you think about Aldi's? It's obviously brand new. And it's very clean. And... Um, it, 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 I mean, it's nice. It, it's spacious. Yeah. It's not crammed like maybe some of the older Aldi's are. Um, but this one looks real nice. I'm staring at Heidi's lips because I have my colorblind glasses on. Are they really you, bright? They're, yeah, I can see your color of your lips, which is funny. I don't normally see that. So, uh, Lake Magic Encore Resort, you can see here. Boom, is right there. So, why would that be important? Well... If you're doing the Encore uh, Parks in between your Thousand Trail stay, um, you could just easily go here then. So what I'm saying is we could stay at Thousand Trails. We could be there for a month during off-season. Um, and then we could come down here and stay for our uh, week that we need to be out of the Thousand Trail system. And then we could go back if we wanted to. We want to do that, though. Now, across the street, just give you a heads up on this one is Publix and there's a liquor store over there that's to the right of the Publix but they don't carry Yukon Jack also a T-Mobile store anyways this is a nice area this is um, 27 no sorry not 27 maybe 192 or it's off of 192 maybe it's 27 I can't remember um, but you can see I'll try to show you this in the distance here this will be hard for me to do because I have my, my contacts in but if you read that sign off in the distance, look at that, Disney World, six miles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guess what that means? You know what that means. We're not going to Disney. And the traffic is horrible because of Disney being that close. So we're going to go ahead and spend our time at the laundromat, also known as laundry mat. We this always... would be a great place to wash all your comforters. Oh, yeah. We should have brought all our... Heidi asked if we want... She goes, do you want to wash all of the bed linens? Because she's washing sheets and pillowcases and stuff like that. And I said, nah, let's not mess with that. Well, I'll tell you right now, we should have messed with that. Because there is no doubt... You could... How many How many queen-size comforters do you think you could wash in that 80-pounder? Oh, for sure I could get two. Yeah. And, and it's just unbelievable there. I might go there. get two and a blanket. Maybe all four. I'll two shoot blankets, some, two comforters. I'll shoot some video in there. Uh, I won't talk, though, because there's a lot of people. So we're out here waiting, and I thought, you know, everything's new. But I'm going to look back here and see what it looks like back here. I have no idea what's going on, but this sidewalk obviously isn't taken care of, and I don't even know what this area is. I mean, it's got a nice little closed-in area. It looks maybe they're going to build more stores back here. That That's a possibility, because um, there are some kind of plants or trees that are being held up with some sticks right down there but I also see some RVs out in the distance I'm not sure what the deal is there it's that's just odd that's an odd situation to have this here but it's so new maybe they you know just got so far with everything I mean even this here what what is this about why this is like some poor planning or something Again, unless they plan on putting a store inside here, but only three spots for parking, that's weird. 
Look what Heidi's doing. Nothing like normal. Shot pole. Heidi's installing a new antenna for us. <laughs> so, uh, you guys that have been following us for a little while, um, you know that I have this Wii Boost that's the RV65, and we love it. I added this for our, it's an omnidirectional, and we, de depending on what our Wi Fi and um, uh, cell data connection is we can switch and either put this to our unlimited MoFi router uh, that has AT&T um, or we can put this to that same router if we have to go a real far distance and try to pick up a, a you know a signal that's further away this one just kind of gathers a signal from all the way around this is like a rifle this is just like a shotgun blast that just 360 degree blowout so had the uh, RV65 which comes with this and then I bought this separately and added it but this is the original antenna and you can see how it failed uh, one of the locking collars just came unglued from the pole well it it caused the, the thing to fail and not only fail but it caused this thing uh, to slide down pretty violently in the uh, the holder um, and I'll show you what those holders look like on the side of the RV. Well, the lower one's still there. You can see it. And those things just slide in and lock in. And it's, it's held on with 3M VHB tape, which is very high bond is what that VHB is. Um, and it's, it's very strong. Once, you know, if you clean your surface, it's very strong. Well, here's the thing. For whatever reason, the tape came off of the mount. You can see up there the the remnants of what's left. Um, I had to just do all kinds of stuff, so did Heidi, to get that much off. So, obviously, uh, we did it correctly to mount it up against the RV. Um, the problem is, is the uh, adhesive, the way it's applied to these plastic brackets, um, must not have been good enough and it came off so uh, we called we boost and heidi did no issue whatsoever though they didn't well, hesitate three -year warranty. yeah it's a three-year warranty and uh i told them the story and they said they'd send us they out an antenna and they said that they would get us a new one but there's always, a, back order. always a big butt involved. <laughs> so it was probably about a month. Actually, probably not quite a month. And they shipped it out. Unfortunately, they didn't let us know that they shipped mm -hmm. it out. So when we went up to pick up what we thought was something small, um, there was this big box, and we were on our bicycles. So <laughs> that box is sitting over there. You can see it. <laughs> Luckily, the guy we was talking to about our bikes... Um, a lot of interest in our bikes. Um, I don't know, I guess, you know, everybody likes to ride bikes. And um, Anyways, we were talking to him, and he, he was in his truck, and he says, Hey, when I'm done in here, just throw it in the back of my truck. I'll take it to your site for you, which was really nice of him. That was great. So, anyways, um, so we got the new antenna, the new mast, I should say, and then I just went ahead and bolted these back on. I got to clean the rest of what's going on, the residue that's up there, and uh, also turn off our docking light. We do that for security at night. And maybe we'll have ourselves some Wi-Fi again. We haven't had any problems here. We haven't had any problems. Um, our AT&T is slower than I like. The unlimited uh, Easycom, Easy.com LLC, it's slower than I like. But other than that, um, we watch all the YouTube that we want. I've uploaded videos, all that stuff for free. Now... When we first got here, you can see, and I'll try to show you here, here's an antenna right here. There's an antenna right there, right? Um, there's an antenna right over there, see that? That's not on an RV, that's in the park here. Those antennas are everywhere. Look, here's one right, zoom you out here, right there. So the deal is, is, you know, obviously one is a signal and the other's a repeater and they're all over this new section of the park. Well, 
when we first got here, it was under the category Orlando Complimentary Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I tried it out, and it was okay. Nothing special. And then I went back to use it like three days later, four days later. No, it was longer than that. It was about seven days later. And I couldn't find it. And in place of it, there was something called Jabba Wi-Fi. Which was the same as uh, Three Flags. No, Three Flags was called, uh, not Jabba. Oh, it was called, it was called something else. But anyways, um, it was like what Three Flags had. And that Jabba Wi-Fi, when you click on it, it says, Oh, you must make an account. And you got to pay for it. So I did, thinking that it was going to be as fast as what Three Flags was, and it's not. Yeah, that other one was called Turbo something Turbo on there. It's probably because there's so many well, people that's on it That here. could be. That, you're absolutely right. So, I mean, if they can't get internet through AT&T here, they're going to have to pay something to so th they have to work. So that's what we're hearing. Uh, we just spoke to this gentleman over here that's in this Mercedes Chateau. Uh, he's getting ready to go full time. Um, he has AT&T and he says that he can't get hardly anything. Now his son though has a newer iPhone 12 or something he said and he says he's getting 5G signal but still it's not you know just because it says 5G doesn't mean anything. Um, so I'll tell you that we have no problem with our T-Mobile at no, all. No. Now we have 5G, but even the 4G stuff, we have not had an ounce of problem with the T-Mobile. We have full bars, right? We, there, yeah. There's no... There's not an issue here. When I was back at home, I didn't have an issue at home, except when I went to my mom's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. So then um, the AT&T for us... Uh, is adequate the, on our unlimited easy.com LLC. It's adequate. Um, and it's doing the job. So I'm, I'm okay with that, but I would like to see the AT&T be a little faster so it would upload videos a little faster for you guys. And, go ahead. So hopefully that does the job. Right, that does the job. And we have um, a change of plans also we should uh, tell you about in a little bit. Maybe we'll do that in just a little bit. <laughs> Heidi's showing me there's a little tiny dot there on the left. I don't know if you can see it. Boom! And that one little dot has decided to happen here. <laughs> that is some weird rain, let me tell you. So, we just had the chat last night, and we both, I, at least me, I feel hungover today. I don't know why. Yeah, I can't even remember the last time. I, a couple of days this week, or a couple of days in the last seven days. Late. I mean, we even slept in today. What time is it now? It's 9.15. Oh, my God. Word, I don't remember sleeping in that for a long time. I could have like got up earlier, and I'm like, nah, I'm not going to. I'm going to turn a fan on because there's so much noise outside that I need to create my own in here in the yeah. bedroom, which don't make any sense. But So I turned the fan on, and I laid back down, and bam, I went right back to sleep. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty tired. I don't know why. Yeah. Groggy. Like I said, groggy. Yeah. Kind of hung over. I got a long well, well, hung over because I got a headache. But, but the thing is, is it's not because we drank. I can't... I said I can't even remember the last time I had any drink. So we uh, have no plans. We want to sit here and uh, talk about plans. Um, that's usually what we do in the morning. Uh, Heidi goes through her routine on the... Uh, her phone, you know, goes through all the comments and everything, especially if we've posted a video or done a video in this case. And then uh, we kind of talk about what we plan on doing throughout the day, if anything. Uh, sometimes we make a plan not to do anything. We plan to do nothing. <laughs> but uh, that was a good chat we had last night. It's too long. It's always too long. You know, he said that we weren't going to do that. 
yeah, uh, it just happened. <laughs> okay, so we finally got to sit down so we could talk about our plans. Um, and ask Heidi, how, how much has our plans changed in the last week and a half? Well, they changed quite a bit, actually. <laughs> yeah. They might still change. It's our mood. Yeah, it's our mood. It's just the mood that we're in and what we think we want to go do. So, um, currently we're still at Orlando here until uh, the 7th, January 7th. I'm not sure when you guys are watching this. We may already be on the road by then. I I'm thinking I'm going to post this, though, relatively quick, at least from this standpoint. Not the clips that we already had. Of course, those are in the past. Then, after uh, we leave here, our current plan is to go to Tampa. Uh, to the RV show, and we'll be at Lazy Days. Um, I know, I know, I, I'm glad that people are looking out for us. Um, I know that we can stay at the fairgrounds. I know that there's a way to stay at the show for 20... Listen, we want, we, we, we don't want to camp. We don't want to really boondock or none of that. I, I, I just want to be able to go to the show, wear ourselves out, I guess, and then come back and relax and and know that I have all the amenities and I don't have to worry about anything, you know, uh, electric dumping, propane, pumping, generators, none of that stuff. So um, that's why we're going to be at Lazy Days. Now, our time at Lazy Days, <laughs> as it stands, is going to be a while. Once we get at Lazy Days, again, that should be after we leave here. Um, February something. I don't even remember what it was. I don't remember. I thought it was like 35 days. Yeah. So, so right now, as it stands, we have, we're there for 35 days. That may change because we have a couple of requests out to some other parks. And if they have openings, we may leave early from Lazy Days. Of course, after the show. But we'll leave early from Lazy Days and go to those other parks. Um, but, uh, like, uh, Wags had said, Dustin, we just spoke with them last night. Oh, and we also met a couple of new YouTubers, uh, Brazen Brits. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we'll have to converse on some level. I mean, it's, it's nice that they're here and I, I would like to be able to sit down and we all talk, you know, and talk about our YouTube experience because that's, that's a whole nother community. Well, anyways, I'm getting off topic. As Dustin had said, there's a lot of stuff to do in Tampa. So, I mean, if you're stuck somewhere, it's just outside the big city. So it's it's an Uber ride somewhere. That's basically it. You can catch an Uber ride and you can pretty much, you know, open air eating is everywhere in Tampa. Um, so that's we're just throwing that out there. I don't know what we'll do exactly. But after Lazy Days, <clears throat> um, at that point after 35 days we think that our fifth wheel will be done and we'll be able to swap over from our travel trailer to our fifth wheel <laughs> did you see the eye roll i did <laughs> I'm, I'm totally kidding guys we're just going to go look at rvs um we're no more towards a travel trailer uh, i'm sorry a fifth wheel than we are a uh, a diesel truck or a class a um they're all up in the air um of course, if we was to change, that's what we would change to. Like most likely, first is a uh, travel trailer. <laughs> I'm sorry, a fifth wheel. Why did I say travel trailer all the time? Maybe that's just a, a Freudian slip. <laughs> so, after lazy days, um, we're going to Fort Myers Beach. Is that correct? Yeah. Fort Myers Beach. Uh, we have reservations down there. Uh, we'll be there for two weeks. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, for visiting friends and also um, trying to enjoy Fort Myers Beach as much as we can, which uh, we'll have to see how our bikes, how all that pans out. I mean, as far as distance and what it's like, it may be pretty decent. Um, but we, we want to spend time at the beach and we don't want it to be a chore to get to the beach, lock up the bikes, well, now it's time to eat. Now we got to go somewhere, or, or we brought food, and how are we going to keep it cool? You know, bringing a cooler. 
I mean, all that can be done. It's just we we know we want to spend time at the beach. That that's kind of foreshadowing here. Um, so after Fort Myers Beach, we will go to Peace River. Uh, we're going to be at Peace River for two weeks. Two weeks, yes, two weeks. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that works. I I mean, I want to do it more for the experience. I think that it could be a, a positive. I mean, like I said, you, you could hammer on the negatives all day long, but... So, somebody got a big dog. Um, but anyways, after that, uh, the two weeks at Peace River, um, we've got to stop briefly at Three Flags. We're going to be at Three Flags just for about four days, I think it is. And, uh, boy, if everything goes the way that I want it to, I won't even have to unhook. But <laughs> I doubt... <laughs> I doubt it. I mean, it is four days still, so we'll, we'll have to see. Um, so after uh, the, the four-day hiatus at um, uh, Three Flags, then we're moving over to, where to? Ormond Beach. Coral Sands. Coral Sands. Yeah, Coral Sands is, if you guys don't know or haven't seen in our previous video, uh, in 2017 when we came down through Florida, we stayed there for a couple of days. Oh, we loved it. It, and it, it's very nice. And I'll tell you what, I don't remember the restaurants being anything great around the area. I don't remember our site being great. Oh, here we go. I don't remember the sand. anything specifically oh, that was there great about it, except really. the uh, staff was very nice and polite. We had full access beach. to the pool at the hotel. I think you this have access to all the amenities at the hotel because it is a an RV resort and then there's a hotel next door. Uh, we did have uh, access to a laundromat there. We did our laundry. Um, but the sites, unless you get, there's only a, a select few sites that you can get that are unbelievable as far as the actual site where you're parked. Other than that, you're basically in a nice sand parking lot that is so close to the beach with full hookups. With full hookups. Yeah, and I, I would have to think where we're going to be, we're close to the road, which we don't care about the noise. It is A1A, so it's not like it's, it's Actually, real noisy. Actually, I don't noisy. see how it could be any noisier than where we're at. Oh, now. yeah, right, right. But the, uh, the walk to the beach is the best part. I mean, when we leave the RV in the morning uh, to go to the beach, it's literally no shoes, Whatever our bitch, bitch, <laughs> whatever our beach attire is, um, and you just, uh, I don't know, maybe it's, it's on the same side as the beach. You're not crossing a road or anything. You're like 50 feet. Yeah, you just walk to the beach, yeah. uh, down some steps, and that's it. Uh, so we're going to be there for a while. We don't know how long. We actually have two reservations there because they didn't have one spot for the entire time that we originally wanted. And uh, you get a reduced rate if you stay for the month. Um, so what we're trying to do is right now we're scheduled for the month and we might have to move sites halfway through. Uh, I should say halfway through. After like 20 days I think we have to move sites. But the thing is is we've got to keep an eye on the weather you can hear we have kids that moved in next door. How joyous. That, that went on until 10 p.m. last night. So, um, I mean, they're kids. What, the, you know, what can you do about it? They, they're, their parents aren't doing anything wrong. <laughs> it's just kids. But the uh, nice thing about the, uh, the beach there is um, uh, that stay. That, that's going to bring us into April. Um, We've got to figure out at that point what the weather's looking like across the country because we really like to get out west before it gets real hot. Um, we want to spend time out there. And then what we'll do is, um, and when I say out west, I mean southwest. Uh, the thing is, is we don't want to leave from here and start that trek too early. I mean, right now it's uh, December, I'm sorry, January uh, Second. 2nd. And Texas just had a decent amount of snow that closed down some roads or caused a lot of problems on roads right on I-10. I mean, right where we'd be traveling to get, you know, out west. So, unless we left here, 
hurried up and skated across, you know, the the lower uh, the Mississippi, Alabama, um, and then Arkansas, in Louisiana, and then into Texas, and then hurried up when we got into Texas and immediately started heading south and go way down in the panhandle, or I'm sorry, the, the belly of Texas, the point of Texas, and then kind of worked our way up, you know, up the Mexican side, uh, where it borders Mexico, up that way. Um, I mean, that's the only way I could think that we could, um, you know, avoid potentially snow uh, I mean granted shooting across the top of the state we could we could just stop if there's snow uh, it's just I don't want to deal with it I don't want to see snow I mean I we're seeing snow you know on our cameras at home <laughs> so um, that's our plans that's our plans right now um, and eventually like I said we'll get out west now as far as the house a lot of people ask about the house so here's the dilemma with the house our water test, our quality test, was fine when we first had it done. Um, and that was back three, four months ago. Um, I didn't know that test expired in 120 days, which I guess. Now, as the guy was doing our test originally, um, he had told us, he goes, listen, these water tests, he goes, I could come back in a week and it might not pass. He goes, or he says, I could come back after it hasn't passed in a week and it might pass so our, our water was fine and our test you know was the first time flying colors including the water pressure flying colors well now that we haven't been in the house this is something that you guys need to take to heart or learn about if you have a well um, if you're not in the house you need to have somebody living there running the water every day just like they normally would since that has not happened in our case, but limited, our, our son washes his clothes there occasionally, um, that's about it. Uh, nobody's running the water or anything for us. Here's the problem that we have, or we've had since then. The water pressure test, when they went to do it, it failed. So we figured that it was a water pump issue, so the water pump had to come apart and get cleaned basically the impeller and the head of it needed cleaned because we figured that it might be you know it's just some buildup that's that silt has built up in there which the pump is high enough the jet is high enough in the well um, it's not really silt it's a it's a black that builds up on the impeller I mean I've cleaned it in the past and it usually lasts oh seven years something like that whenever I do the cleaning on it uh, so that's what needed done so we thought so the pump took got taken apart that got all stirred up um, whenever they turned it back on they didn't bypass the whole house filter so that got filled with sediment and all kinds of crap so a new household filter went on even with that the low pressure was still an issue that's when Heidi was at the house there when she flew home so they uh, we, we bought a new softener and had it installed because our softener was very old and I believe all that cement might have got pushed into the softener whenever we were doing the uh, you know when they were doing that pump cleaning see that's the stuff that I would have bypassed everything when I when we did that so whenever I turn everything on there's no chance of it going through that but <clears throat> excuse me that's that's I wasn't there so that's what happened so a new water softener went in but when they filled it up with salt they put the old salt in and some of the old salt was filthy inside I mean it was dirty it was at the bottom of the brine of the barrel and there was you know there was something going on at the bottom of the barrel that happens at most again if you guys aren't familiar with wells and uh, fresh water and spring water if you ever look at like in our case we used to get spring water years ago the pipe that came out of the mountain that supplied us with the spring water it was it was piped they connected to the the pressure point and they put a black pipe out of the all around that pipe was like moss and there was buildup and I mean there was all kinds of stuff no mold or anything like that but like lots of moss and green like a film all over the place the thing is the water that came out of it though was crystal clear and perfect 
Now, if I would have got up there, which I don't even know how, and I would have shaken that black pipe, and I would have put my hand over the end and held the pressure as long as I could and let it out and, you know, all that stuff, or I disconnected it somewhere and then reconnected it again, all that moss and everything, all that would, would actually break loose. This is what happened, actually, in Michigan with the city water. They, they had those breaks or those tests or they they redid the plumbing where there was more pressure anyways it it broke loose a bunch of contaminants that weren't being stirred up prior but with all that extra pressure and all those changes it, it stirred it up well that's what happened at the house there between the the pump being worked on the softener being replaced the water filter being screwed with um, the whole house filter now they came in to test it, and it failed. And it failed by a large margin, and it, large Marge sent you. Have a nice day. <laughs> Be sure and tell them Large Marge sent you. <laughs> a large margin. And the, the whole reason is, is because, if you, which we didn't even know, our son went to wash his clothes, and he says, I don't have water again. I said, what do you mean? And then he showed me the water filter, the whole house water filter, and it's just disgusting but more importantly is now the pump is not running and the reason the pumps not running I have no idea I think what happened is the pressure uh, was set incorrectly because it's a very sensitive thing and it needs reset so um, we'll have to see we don't know maybe we have a bad pressure switch uh, maybe I mean there's stuff that needs to be done because we have to have the water retested now the pressure test it, it did pass now there's no water, so we got to fix that again. Um, and all this is because we weren't there running the water. I mean, year after year, uh, you know, day after day, we've never had issues with any of that stuff. And now, because we haven't been there, I mean, that's that's what it is. Like parking your car for two years in the driveway, then trying to start it up and drive, and there's all kinds of issues. Well, I wish I would have known before I left, and I I could have shocked the system. Oh, that was something out. Well, we may not have to shock the system. It could be that because of all that other crap that was going on, right. that's what he actually measured was the the, the debris right. that was in the system. Um, we again, we don't know, but that's what we're we were told to do is shock the system. Well, we can't at this point because all the stuff is dirty. Um, the softener salt is relatively clean, I think, at this point, um, and then the filter. Uh, is filthy the whole house filter that needs replaced but that can't get replaced until we get the pump up and running once the pump is up and running um, with the whole house filter bypassed and the softener bypassed we need to run a whole crap load of water a lot of water needs to be run uh, to clear all that stuff out again something that I easily could have done but I mean it's it's after the fact now so that's what's going on with the house made this video a lot longer just because of that huh all right so this is it the the video's finished um Heidi and I is going Heidi and I is going to go try to find something to do today and uh it's cloudy as you can probably see in the background I think uh maybe maybe not I can't tell um but it's cloudy but it's warm it's 80 it's nice out the the pollen counts real high here too so yeah January 2nd and it's 82 so nice all right we're going to close it out so tell them as always, we hope to see you out here. Bye. Bye.